I'm Rick Buck and I've been a dentist for 15 years and in this video you're about to see how and why I fix the dark spots and cavities on these front teeth including all the steps I take and why each step is essential. In the following video I will show you how I remove the white spots on these front teeth as well and do fillings so like and subscribe if you have teeth. And as always, we start by numbing the patient in this first of two appointments. Usually I would fix all these spots in one appointment, but this patient actually just came in to take care of the cavities because that's what his insurance would cover. And so that is what we did on this appointment. But then once he saw how good it looked at the end of this appointment, he then immediately scheduled to remove all the white spots too from these front teeth. So that's why we're doing it in two appointments. So we start by taking my drill and just removing the dark spots. The dark spots on these teeth are tooth decay or cavities as you may know. And in case you don't know, we can tell this is a cavity because it's dark and then it's sticky to the touch with my little dental explorer. So if it's dark and sticky, it's pretty much uh, tooth decay. Now, after I remove the dark spots, I'm also going to remove all the white area around these teeth as well. These white spots aren't necessarily tooth decay though. So tooth decay is actually just a aggressive form of tooth demineralization. And we can get more into that in another video. In fact, the white spots on these teeth, while not necessarily decay, were likely demineralized from plaque very badly at one point and then at a later point, they were remineralized with improved hygiene, and that's what left this white spot. This demineralized, then remineralized look is very common in kids with braces that don't brush all the time because they get lots of plaque around the braces, and the demineralization process starts to demineralize and then remineralizes and leaves the white spots. So while the white spots aren't actually active decay, I still remove all of it because if I did a white cosmetic filling only where the dark spots are, the filling would be so obvious and stand out because it would be right next to and right in the middle of the white spots. And so the filling would stand out by contrast. So instead, I gotta remove all the white stuff so the filling doesn't actually stand out. And once we remove all the white demineralized enamel layer, the underlying yellow layer called dentin is exposed. So as I'm removing some of the enamel, note that where the active decay was on the enamel, you will notice there's discoloration underneath as well. So now here, let's look at both. The more healthy dentin has a yellow look to it. And then if you look on this canine, the dentin has this orangey look to it. And then on the other tooth where the dentin is, it's still dark underneath where we remove the enamel. And both the orangey and dark look to the dentin are both tooth decay that has made its way into the dentin level. And we're going to remove all that in a moment. Before removing all the underlying discoloration, I want to pause here to show you the last dark spot I want to remove. When looking at it from the back side through my mirror, you can see this dark shadow which shows us there is decay here. For cosmetic reasons, it is best to uncover the decay from the back side of the tooth and not the front side. As we drill into it, you can see we have exposed the dark decay in the mirror. And so we've done all of this until this point with my high speed drill. But now we switch to a slow speed drill. The difference between the two is the high speed drill is better for removing healthy tooth and the slow speed drill is better for removing mostly decay and very little healthy tooth. And this is why, when you use a slow drill on decay, it comes out this mushy or flaky substance. When you drill on healthy dry tooth, it comes out this dusty substance. Knowing this is important because first, you know when you have removed all the decay with the slow speed drill because it's no longer mushy. And second, you know that you don't need to drill any further once you're getting into dust because you've removed all the decay to that point. But besides getting to the more dusty tooth debris, you can tell decay is gone by a more yellow appearance of the dentin as I showed you earlier, instead of the orangey or brown appearance as we saw before. Going back to the between the teeth, I'm going to remove the decay still with the high speed drill and the rest until the dark is all gone. Then I will get any remaining decay with the slow speed drill again. 
In other words, you don't have to remove the decay with the slow speed drill. I just did that to show you what it looks like. But you do likely want to use the slow speed drill to tell if all the decay is gone. If you stop looking through my mirror, even though that's what I'm using, you can even start to see the decay coming out of the front side of the tooth. In fact, if I pause the video right now, in the mirror you can see a dark spot where I removed the decay that was kind of peeking through and showing on the front side of the tooth before. This discoloration is from the shadow that is picked up from the back of your mouth and will lighten with the filling in place. And I'm not going to focus on this other one too much but we drill out the cavity right next to it on the adjacent tooth as well. And just one note because you might be noticing there's still white spots on this tooth that we're only removing the decay from this tooth because the filling isn't going to sit in the middle of those white spots. And once again, because the patient liked the way this looked, we do remove these white spots in the next video at the next appointment. One thing you may start to notice is the white spots getting more apparent throughout the tooth during the procedure. So where there wasn't even a white spot earlier, you may see it start to be getting another white spot. We will explain that phenomenon later and in the next video as well. Now we're getting close to the end of the drilling, but before filling the teeth, I lightly run over where the cavities were with the slow speed drill one last time to ensure that they are solid and there's no decay left behind. And to confirm, there was no decay left behind, so we will start by filling the front side of these teeth, and then we'll do the back and between the teeth after we've done the fillings on the front side. Quickly, my favorite toothbrush, floss, and other dental products by far are in Amazon affiliate links in the description below this video. Those dental products will give you stunning results every time you clean your mouth. And you can also watch my video posted at the end of this video to see why they are the best and how to brush and floss your teeth with immaculate results. We will start by etching the slot that we made in the tooth. And we dentists call this slot the prep or the filling preparation. Now the blue etch that I'm applying here is 35% phosphoric acid and will enhance the bond that we will make in just a moment. So we rinse that thoroughly away and then next we use a bond called Peak Universal Bond. Now I love Peak Universal Bond and I've personally tested out this bond against all the other strong bonds that I had considered and I found this to be the strongest. Now going back to the tooth, you'll notice me also kind of scrubbing the bond into place. And that once again helps the filling bond better to the tooth. Once we scrub it into place, then we suction and air off the excess bond. And this intense light cures or sets the bond into place. We then take this little gun that has the resin filling material in it and we express it into the prep and you'll see me using my instruments to now shape it into place. While I'm doing this, I'm also checking to make sure the filling color matches the rest of the tooth. If it didn't, what I do is I quickly remove all the resin, get a different shade, and place that one into the prep. When doing any resin filling, it's essential to fill the tooth in layers. So first I press the filling so it adapts tightly to the upper part of the prep. Then I light cure it and set it into place and you're able to then add on to it as well. Before I add that second layer, it might be important to understand why we do it. You see, when you light cure a resin, it actually shrinks about one, two to five percent, somewhere in there. Doing it in layers doesn't stop the shrinkage from happening, but it stops the shrinkage from all the bad side effects that it might be putting on the tooth as you light cure it. So basically, there will be less likely to have sensitivity on the tooth after, and also it will ensure that the resin filling is well adapted to the tooth even after the shrinkage. And you can start to see after multiple layers that I light cure and the more layers I do, the more it starts to look like a whole tooth now. Now, before we shape and refine and polish these fillings to make them look pretty, we will fill in the preps between the teeth as well. What you're going to see is mostly the same steps as before, only you're gonna see we place this clear strip and wedge in there as well. The strip helps keep the bond and the filling into the prep only so that it doesn't get everywhere else. And then it also helps so the transition of the filling to the tooth is smooth and flush. The wedge helps fix the clear strip into place and that wedge actually wedges slightly the teeth apart. If you didn't use that wedge, then the shrinkage and the space of that clear strip would possibly leave a gap where food and debris can get caught into it. So that wedge helps you overcompensate for that lack of space that you would use without it. In other words, 
these teeth won't contact each other very tightly if you don't use the wedge. So now that we have those into place, we're getting close to the end. So we smooth these fillings with this refining drill bit. So with my high speed drill, we're making everything flush and smooth. And one big reason why you need these smooth is you need to prevent future staining from getting around the crevices of these fillings. And so they need to be very smooth. And I guess more importantly than the staining itself is decay can also get in there. The more smooth these fillings are and the more seamless the transition the better. Now you'll see here I'm using my little explorer to see if it catches anywhere and it does catch in a few spots where I need to smooth it out some more. This little excess that you can't see but you can catch on your explorer is called flash and it's hard to see but it still needs to be removed. So if there's enough there to catch my explorer there's also enough there to catch stains and also possibly tooth decay. Luckily if the dentist doesn't see this little flash and it does get stained years down the road, you just have to quickly redo this step and the stain goes away with it. Now we've mostly just done some bulk refining here, but to make it look really nice, I use a series of discs and these discs polish and refine it so that it looks nice and smooth and shiny. And then this blue paper is to make sure the patient is biting evenly on their teeth and fillings. So after I have them bite on the blue paper, if it leaves a big mark on the new fillings, we know that the filling is too high and we have to file that down a little bit more. Otherwise their bite will be off and they'll feel like they're just hitting on these two teeth and not able to bite naturally. Okay, now I'm going to show you two different results for this procedure. So the first one is at the end of the appointment and I show this to the patient at the end of the appointment and he's very happy except now he notices much more the other white spots that aren't cavities on the other teeth. And it's worse than just seeing the white spots because your teeth, when they get dry, these white spots stand out much more than when they're wet. And his teeth are really dry now because he's been open so long and we're always just drying the tooth off. And then those little etches and things we do, those also dry the tooth off. And so these white spots become extremely noticeable, even the ones that were imperceivable before we started the procedure. But he's so happy with the way the ones that we did today look that he immediately schedules to have the other white spots taken care of as well. Only those ones now are gonna be done for purely cosmetic reasons. And to prove what I'm saying, that these white spots are more prominent when the tooth is dry, this is what his front teeth look like a week later, right before we do the other white fillings. You can see that a lot of the white spots are gone and the really prominent ones that were at the end of the last appointment are now barely there as well. So if you wanna see the results of everything after I'm done, you'll have to go watch that video for the final results. Now, many of you may have arrived at this point because of a lack of adequate hygiene and you may not even realize it and think you're doing a good job. Watch my daily dental care video I have posted now for the best technique, tips and product recommendations for a stunningly clean mouth that avoids tooth decay, gum disease, and gives you fresh breath. The best dental products that I recommend are in Amazon affiliate links in the description below. If in Southern California, my dental office is in the description as well. Like and subscribe to my channel if you have teeth.